Can you remove someone from your mortgage while on Chapter 13, while having problems with your credit? Is there a bank that can help you? That is the topic. That is what we're going to talk about in this video. So stay tuned. All right, so this is a response to Jose Ortiz. Jose Ortiz, if you're watching this, thank you very much for your email. I received your email, and I believe you sent me an email with your phone number. I was supposed to reply back to you, but being 100% transparent and honest with you, I've been running around all day. Uh, I'm rehabbing a rental house, and it's it's you know it is a lot of work mentally, physically. Anyway, even my kids are helping me paint the house, just so you know. That's how crazy things are. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer your question, and let me read your situation. Uh, so, Jose lives in Texas. By the way, Texas laws for refinance are completely different than anywhere else in the United States. So, definitely, you want to talk to somebody that is licensed in the state of Texas. And to put things clear... I was a loan officer six months ago. I quit to become a full-time real estate investor. So I'm not, uh, I was never licensed in the state of Texas. I was licensed in several states of, of the United States. Uh, my license are still active, but I just don't belong to any mortgage company. Therefore, I cannot write loans. But I dealt with bankruptcy a lot. That was our niche market. So I'm going to try to talk to, to talk, uh, uh I'm going to try to uh, give you my personal opinion. I wouldn't call it advice. My personal opinion about your this specific situation that you're describing. All right. So, uh, so it seems that you're currently in Chapter 13 bankruptcy. Let me stop you right there. Chapter 13, that means that you have a payment plan between three to five years. Now, to refinance, while on Chapter 13, I made... I made um, several videos about this but just to give you a quick summary of what we need before you before we go any farther first thing we need is 24 on time payments to the trustee on time payments let, let me emphasize this on time payments if there is one payment late one payment late we're done uh, no mortgage company will refinance it period and the trustee approval, which we will need, most likely will not happen. It might happen, but the mortgage company, the underwriters, will not approve one late payment. It's almost nearly impossible. I, I wouldn't even put any hopes into that. I will concentrate on getting 24 on-time payments that you can prove. If you pay the trustee with cash, it's not going to work. You need to pay them with something. With a check would be ideal. Something that you can track. Something that you can print from your bank statement saying, look, there's the proof, January, February. And you need to be able to prove each one of those payments. Now you're going to say, why? Because You're going to say, well, my trustee keeps tracks of all that. Yes, but some trustees, because they are very smart when it comes down to bankruptcy. Sorry, that was sarcastic, but it really annoys me. Some trustees, the way that they treat people, some trustees will not apply the payment that you make immediately to that month. Maybe they, they will put together like four, five, six months and then apply it to your bankruptcy. That makes absolutely no sense. Some trustees will pay the mortgage whenever they feel like it. Some mortgages will decide that, you know what, because they're in bankruptcy, we're just going to save, we're going to accumulate all these payments, all this money, and then we're going to make the mortgage payment. They cannot file for a foreclosure anyway. So anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is, if the trustee says that you your payments are late, that you made a late payment, but you haven't, you need to have proof, crystal clear proof, that all your payments have been made on time. And if the payments show late, that's the trustee's fault, that's XYE fault, the bank fault, but you have the proof that you put the check, uh, that you gave them the check, the check was cashed, and your bank statement shows January payment for my trustee made, February made, March made, etc. Does that make sense? So 24 on-time payments. If you don't have that, 
We'll stop right there. We gotta fix that first before moving forward. Okay, so the issue is you need to remove. Uh, you have a cosigner on the mortgage, and you need to remove the cosigner from the mortgage. Let's see. You want to make your own journey already? Okay. That's fine. So you want to remove the person from the mortgage. That means that you got to refinance your mortgage. Is there a bank that I can talk to so they can refinance my lo loan to remove her? Yes. Any bank will do it. Now, the problem is not necessarily removing, removing the person from your mortgage. The problem is going to be you need to find a bank that deals with bankruptcies. Most of the banks out there, in the moment you say chapter 7, chapter 13, chapter 11, in the moment you say bankruptcy, they're done. Thank you very much. See you. Bye. That's what they're going to say to you because they know how difficult it is to deal with bankruptcies. Therefore, they choose not to deal with them. They choose to deal with people that have excellent credit, good credit, maybe fair credit, but no. They, especially these days, the way that the interest rates are and the economy is and COVID and all the whole nightmare, especially these days, no, they, 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 they don't, uh, they don't, they don't help people equally, if that makes sense. It's absolutely unfair and awful. The mortgage industry, it's an absolutely nightmare. That's one of the reasons why I got out of it. And because I wanted to be self-employed, etc. But the point is, it is, I know, I understand how frustrating it is. I personally know some mortgage companies. Well, I know the one that I was working with, that's what they specialized. That was the niche market. But there's a few, there's a few out there that will be able to help you. You just got to be persistent. You just got to have all your documents and all your dots um, on the line, if that makes sense. So, all right. So I need to bring my credit score to 600, I've been told. Okay, hold on to that. Uh, so a loan officer, pull your credit. Okay, the credit score. Yes, we, the company I was working for, we require at least 600. And for most mortgages, depending on the, on the loan amount of the mortgage, you will need at least 620. 620 would be at least 620 would be the ideal. And this is before COVID. After COVID, things got even worse. I've been told that there's mortgage companies that in order to do bankruptcy these days, you need at least 640 and up. And you're going to say, well, how am I supposed to have 640 credit, 620 credit, even 600 credit if I'm in bankruptcy? That's the whole purpose of me filing bankruptcy. I had a lot of financial hardships. Therefore, I had to file for Chapter 13. That should mean something. It should mean that I'm trying to pay all my all my debt. They should be able to count, to take that into consideration. Unfortunately, they don't. You need to work on your credit. If you're on Chapter 13, you need to watch every video on YouTube. You need to read every website that talks about credit. You need to go to you need to follow every advice possible to increase your credit score. One of the things I used to tell people is talk to your trustee and tell them, look, trustee, I need to improve my credit. Therefore, can I get a prepaid credit card? Can I get uh you know one of those credit cards that they give to anyone? It's a prepaid credit card, I and mean, you're using your own money to create credit, if that makes sense. Those are great. As long as you make the minimum payment and you don't go over 30% of the credit uh, limit that you have, you, there we go. I mean, they, they will be reporting every month to your credit, and that will help you significantly. I've seen people that while in Chapter 13, they've worked on their credit every month, and they had, by the time they, they, they you know, uh, by the time they were like two, three years into the bankruptcy, they had like 700. I seen somebody with like 780, and I'm like, 780 score while bankruptcy. This is mind blowing, you know? Anyway, all I'm saying is it's doable, it's possible, but nobody does it because everybody, of course, has other problems, other, other, you know, other difficulties that they got to deal with. And who's going to be paying attention to their. To their to the to, to their credit score, especially when the trustee is watching every move that you make, which is insane and it's crazy. 
I don't like trustees, as you can tell. Anyway, um, all right, so going back into your message, uh, so you need to get at least 600. Um, you know, they say that the loan officer told you that your one of your one of the bureaus says 635 and the lowest one is 583. They're gonna put all three, all three bureaus, and they're gonna pick the middle one. That means that the lowest score won't count and the highest score won't count. It would be the middle one. Uh, TransUnion, Equifax, and uh, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting things now. But anyway, they're going to pick the middle one, and it's going to be the credit score eight. That is the algorithm that most mortgage companies use. So don't use Credit Karma. Credit Karma is absolutely absolutely garbage when it comes down to your to your score, to your credit. Credit Karma is great to track the open accounts, your balances. Are you close to your credit limits? Uh, are you making your payments on time? Uh, reminders. You want to make sure that uh, your payments are posting on time and that kind of stuff. To track your payments, track your accounts, check your uh, your account history, and even to see if somebody is is committing fraud or you know and that kind of stuff. But Credit Karma will not give you the right credit score. Credit Karma sucks. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even look at the score. That score is completely wrong. Period. Completely. A hundred percent of the time, everybody has a wrong in Credit Karma. So, I would use like uh, some credit cards offer a free credit report with a uh, with with this uh, credit score eight, uh, which that's the right algorithm that most mortgage companies use. So, uh, you said that it's a very frustrating situation. Yes, I made a lot of videos about this. Uh, if you're looking for a loan officer in Texas, I might be able to recommend one for you if that's what you want to do, if that's if that's the path that you want to go. But a good loan officer, the first thing that they're going to do is pull your credit. They're not going to talk to you about anything else. They're going to say, let's pull your credit. You say no, they move on especially the loan officers that do they do bankruptcies. Why? Because a good experienced loan officer knows that with a good credit score there's nothing nothing that can be done. If I with, with without a good trustee payment history there's nothing that can be done. 24 months of on-time payment history that you can prove and a good credit score is what what it takes to deal with to jump the billion hoops that you're going to have to jump to uh, while on bankruptcy to refinance your home while on bankruptcy. So if you don't have either one of those two, you need to start working on those two right away. I can recommend you a really good loan officer, a license in the state of Texas, if that's what you want to do. But I want to be upfront with you. They're going to be pulling your credit first thing. And you're going to say, well, this mortgage company already pulled my credit. Well, you have 45 day window to pull your credit as many times as you need with as many mortgage companies as you like, um, without affecting or being double dip or double penalized, uh, without affecting your credit again and so on. So I don't know when was the last time that a mortgage company pulled your credit, but you should keep that in mind. So you should do whatever you want to do. Do it now. Do it quick. That way your credit is not affected for uh, credit inquiries, if that makes sense. I hope this video answers your questions. I, I'm trying to be as clear as I can, but when it comes down to the trustee payment history, there's absolutely no exceptions. Don't waste your time. 20 on-time payments, period. That's it. And you got to be able to prove it. And the credit score, there is ways to bring your score up. Uh, you can be a uh, an authorized person in, some, in someone else's account that has a good credit score. Uh, if you if they add you as an authorized person, that is a great way to improve your credit. Why? Because their credit history will be copied to you. Therefore, your credit will do boom. It will just jump. Uh, you want to have prepaid prepaid credit cards. Make your payments on time. Um, you know, don't go over thirty percent of your credit balance. If possible, pay may all your payment all the balance on time every month. Those small things can improve your credit significantly and help you achieve what you're looking for, which is to remove a cosigner of your mortgage. I hope this helps. I'm, you know, I, I'm not a mortgage loan officer anymore, 
So if there's anything I can do to help you, please let me know. Subscribe, thumbs up. I hope you guys have a good night. Bye.